Hello and welcome to Roots to Sprouts. In this video, we are going to see two things. One is how to water your garden and what are the different types of irrigation systems that we can set up in the garden. Before we see the irrigation methods, I want to talk about some of the common mistakes we all do. So, the first very common mistake is when we water, especially when you transplant or when you directly sow your seeds, what happens is like we normally take our hose and then we put in a flower mode like this and then we will water so that we all think that it doesn't disturb the plant or it doesn't disturb the seedling and it did water your bed right so let's see let's take i will show you an example so i'm watering it so well in this place so you will feel that the water is tagging on the top so it gets enough water to the plants all that right let's see for more than two minutes i have been standing in the same place and watering this bed let's see how much water went inside the soil and how deep the water went in the bed let me show you what is happening okay so the bed is fully soaked as you look but when I look at this just this top layer only this top layer is wet look at underneath there is no water at all so this is the dry soil in your bed so you might think that you have watered well enough your bed so that is sufficient for your plants but that's not true next i want to show you how mulching really helps watering your garden get to mulch my beds so i'm just showing an example look at this bed now i'm going to water okay another thing is watering your plants in the early morning it really helps because the water in the leaves and in the plants it dries because of the um, the daylight and the sun that you get the more you water in the evening the water stays in the leaves and the plants it tend to attract more insects that's why we don't suggest to water the plants in the evening time or in the late evening like this and when i water the bed look at this how much the soil is getting disturbed and it is shifted from one place to another place. When you mulch and you water, it doesn't disturb the soil. The aeration between the mulch and the gap between the mulch, it takes the water and it slowly releases the water to your bed. It doesn't disturb your soil or the bed, soil bed directly so mulching is very important for both your winter as well as during the summer season let's look at the first method which is simple and easy to implement using the sprinklers Thanks to Pavan, our neighbor and also a very good friend of mine who um, helped me to take a video that to showcase what he has done in his backyard to his garden using the sprinklers. Let's take a look at what he has done to his garden. If you are living in a house and if there are sprinkler system installed, your layout plan should have the marks where the sprinkler systems are running throughout your lawn area. Our home this is the backyard we have 150 um, feet 100 foot uh, pipe another 150 foot mm -hmm. and I kind of these are some of the parts that you should have before converting your sprinkler into an irrigation system the first one is the sprinkler system itself that you're going to remove and you're going to put the racer after you put the racer you need to put the connector that will connect to a half inch pipe that right. okay so that's uh, that's coming from the ground okay. first part the home <laughs> okay. we, did, we did not have the, the any of these plants okay. so the, the builder just gave this oak tree 
and nothing else. So what we did is we started planting all these plants. Mm -hmm. So we have some um, flowers plants. We have a couple of fruit plants. Okay. And jasmine, hibiscus, magnolia, and some canna lilies. Okay. So um, during the summer, one thing I realized is every day, you have to pla water, water at least two it, yep. times a day. Exactly. Yep. So um, if you miss even one time, mm -hmm. you kind of see the plants are asking for water. Water, yeah. Yep. So I started looking at how I can actually do a drip irrigation to all the plants. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what I did is I did some research online. Okay. How I can do it. Okay. So one of the things, the advantage I had was this one is already has, this tree already has a drip irrigation. Okay. This oak tree. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if, if I want to use the same drip irrigation to other rest of the backyard for the, the plants? Backyard. So the one good thing maybe for you is like these trees are, are in, a, in a separate zone, right? Yes. So it was easy for you to control that yes. zone alone, zone, yeah. and you can take the connection to the other places. Yeah. Okay. So this is zone 11. Zone 11. Okay. So there's uh, three trees connected to zone 11. Okay. Um, this oak tree here and two oak trees in the front. The front. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good actually. Um, yeah. Okay. So when I did online research, mm -hmm. uh, what I found was um, uh, the, the the main things that I needed here was this black pipe. Okay. This is a half inch pipe uh -huh. that will that will not that's not a drip irrigation pipe. It doesn't have holes in it. Correct. We have to punch the punch holes the on holes. it. Yep. So this is a more focused irrigation mm -hmm. where you have is that the, the water is coming from here yep. to this one. So the basic main parts you have is this pipe. Yes. So this is a one fourth inch. Mm -hmm. And this is called this one is called the emitter emitter yeah so the color represents the amount of water it emits per hour uh, okay so green here is two gallons per hour oh okay and um, red means four gallons per hour okay and, and the and you get all this in Home Depot Lowe's or Home Depot. Gonna, Home Depot. Home Depot. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you, you can, I shared the links yep. in the Home Depot. You can, okay. You can you you get those at Lowe's too. Lowe's too. Okay. Okay. So what I did is for this, I did not connect this one first. What okay. I did is I bought the black pipe first. Uh huh. I laid it down. You ran that pipe all the way. Yeah. To that edging, right? It, all the way to the edging. It goes all the way from here to there. To all the plants. There. Plants. Okay. So it's around 125 okay. uh, feet, feet length. Okay. Once I did that, you need a puncher. Yeah. To punch the holes. This is a punching the blue one. So this so one you, you punch it in that black black one black, black pipe. pipe. Once you punch it, um, there is a. I'll need to get one more part that actually connects this brown pipe, mm -hmm. the one fourth inch pipe. Okay. To the black pipe. Okay. So let me let me get that one. So once you do that, you can. The choice is the, whichever the emitter, emitter you want. Type. You can connect one one end, and the other one goes on the pipe. Right. Pipe, yeah. Okay. So this one, this one goes to the black. This okay. one goes to the emitter, and this is a stake that um, uh, you use the stake so you can position your emitter on uh, close to the plant. Oh, okay. okay. So these are some of the parts that you need as part of your sprinkler irrigation setup as Pavan mentioned. The first one is the half inch tube where you're going to run the dripper. The second one is the coupling. If you want to put an extension you can use the coupling. And then you have emitter, you have the punching machine or the puncher that you call to put the connect in the half inch tube and then you can connect the, the quarter inch tube to the emitter and then it can be connected to the black tube. And then um, you can use the end cap towards the end to lock the black tube so there is no water released at the end. Okay, so now let's take a look at the faucet hose setup. This is something readily available in the market. You can buy and you can connect it. So I want to show you both the DIY as well as the readily available one in the, in the store. So this is something I found in a gardenersupply.com and it was very useful and I, and I did it in my garden to one, of the, uh, one set of the beds. 
and it comes with a hundred foot long um, the soaker hose and the um, the main uh, garden hose pipe which is 25 feet so that means you can you can run 25 feet long bed four beds okay so that's what they have shown in the picture and they have given a very good connectors to connect all these drip uh, the soaker hose pipes from the main hose uh, pipes so it's very easy to set up let me show you what i have done with this particular piece is called faucet adapter one end of this adapter will connect to your faucet or to your hose pipe that comes from the faucet. The other end will connect to your dripping hose or um, to the to the half inch irrigation tube. This kit also comes with a pressure regulator. That's what you see now. It is a it is a snap type. So what you need to do, you have to snap that pressure adapter to this faucet adapter like this and you have to press it that's it so now it's fully connected and this is a coupler which connects the hose pipes uh, and it can be an extender as well the process is same you have to insert the soaker hose or the faucet pipe in the one end on the other end you can extend it and you can run it wherever you need in the garden bed but always make sure first you put the lock and then insert the the soaker hose or the garden hose in the coupler so that you can lock and you can tighten it so this end connect to the faucet the other end can be connected to your other Y connector or the coupler what they have given and you can use it however you want your garden set up and the beds are connected in your garden. Next what you see is the Y connector. This is one of the very smart piece in the kit that really helps your garden and you can run multiple connections from the single line that is a main line. So once it, the process works in the same way you have to release the lock and you have to insert the garden hose and then you need to connect it and then stretch the pipe as much as you can in your backyard so that you know where you need to put the connector and where to cut these pipes and um, you can design your garden beds and you can make sure what is the length of the soaker pipe and the main garden hose that you need to have between the beds that's the reason i stretch these pipes to measure and to cut it so after you measure and cut these pipes connect the connectors to these soaker pipes so it's the same process what i showed earlier connect one end of the soaker pipe to these connectors and put the end cap to the other end so that the water doesn't leak and once you connect it tight the connector with the lock that they have given along with this connector so that it is firm and it doesn't um, comes out from the connector with the pressure So after that is done, what you have to do, you have to just simply connect the soaker tubes and then um, connect, uh, connect it to the main line, uh, to, the, to the garden hose line and then run the soaker tubes according to your plans in the garden bed and put the, uh, the garden pins on the ground so that it stays, uh, it stays firm on the ground. So that's it, it's a very simple process. As you see, once it is done, you connect to your main faucet hose pipe to this uh, kit um, and then turn on the water, you will see the water dripping from the soaker pipe. So in this method, you will, you will overcome two problems. One is, it will give you a very steady and slow release of water to your garden bed so that you do a deep watering and your time can be completely saved and the effort of yours can be spent on something else like going and in inspecting the plants and checking how healthy the plants are are there any symptoms in the plants for any 
disease or any infection in the plants by looking at the leaves you can wisely spend your time on those kind of effort than manually watering your garden So now let's look at the standard PVC method. This is a really a long term plan that if you want to do with your irrigation setup, go for this kind of setup, this kind of uh, irrigation method. Okay, these are like scheduled 40 outdoor PVC pipes that is um, that is uh, mainly for the plumbing. And what I did for each bed, I have connected and I ran a pipe and I made a T joint. And under, and after the T joint, I had a lock so that I can make a decision whether I need to run the water to that bed or not by locking and unlocking that particular um, the lock that I have in each bed and then sometimes you know you might need this kind of a uh, dripper um, uh, the manifold that that can connect that can run multiple dripper lines from one connect and this one what you see this is a connector that connects from the PVC pipe to your half inch tube so my little helper he is helping me to put these uh, pvc pipes together and to put these connectors on the pipe once the connectors are done then connect the half inch black tube to that connector and run it to your bed or to your trees or to your plants with using this emitter and this emitter is something you can adjust the water level so that it gives a very steady and slow water release to your garden bed And one last thing I want to tell in this method, I don't put um, the PVC solution to glue these pipes permanently because every year I try to remove these pipes to clean and to connect it again. And also I might change my mind to, to, to uh, rearrange my garden beds and that time I might need to uh, uh, remove these pipes, right? So uh, for me, for the water pressure, it wasn't a problem for me to um, just manually push and pull these pipes without using the solution. So that's something I want to share with you all. And the last irrigation method in this video is Oya pot irrigation. And this is one of the old and tradition way of using a terracotta pot filled with water and um, it discharges the water to the plant in the garden bed or wherever you have the plants. This is one of the most traditional and the olden days method that people used to water the plants when there wasn't no hose pipes or no um, irrigations or sprinklers or things like that. So I will show I will shoot another video to show how we have done this Oya pot. But the intention of this pot is um, if you have plants that doesn't need too much of water and if you think in that place the water doesn't stay in the ground because of the slopeness of your garden bed or your land itself even if you water using your uh, hose drip irrigation or like um, uh, like manually watering it the water doesn't stay in your bed then that time this particular method will help you because it doesn't release water that much and your plants will take the water how much is needed for them from these Oya pots. So that is the intention um, why we have the Oya pots uh, in the garden. So by now you should have got some idea about different types of irrigation what you can uh, do in your garden, um, what suits for your garden. So think about what is right what is the right method that you can implement in your garden and um, go for any particular kit that is available in the store or if you want to do a DIY if you are a DIY person there are so many ways that you can do it it will take some time but you can do it and feel yourself proud that you did something by yourself to your garden um, or something like this the Oya pot is something even more very nice very unique and very traditional that you can do so i hope you like this video leave your comments and let me know what irrigation method that you have done to your garden i appreciate your support to our channel and um, let us know if you have any feedback or any comments in the comment section talk to you all soon in another video take care bye